she'll also be the same. You're telling her, oh, let's take our children to Sunday school. They're like, no, let's watch cartoons on Sunday. Likewise, even to a woman, when you say that. So to me, the unequally yoking was mandatory to me, and I knew I couldn't. And not just because someone is going to church. I had to look at it, and this is prayerfully, because you cannot understand the heart of a man or the heart of a woman. It's only God who can be able to help you understand. Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you're watching us from. This is Carol Kyoi Moments and uh, just want to thank you for finding a moment to come here. And today we'll be discussing about how to prepare for marriages spiritually. <laughs> yeah, now we've been able to look at um, a few areas on how to prepare for marriage. We looked at uh, emotionally, psychologically, financially and today about i thought about uh spiritually how did i uh prepare for that as well and as we are saying these videos are just to encourage to motivate to inspire to give hope and just to to to, to help us just be able to be in the new of um marriage is is the ultimate thing but in the waiting what do you do and as we say sometimes it even takes longer for some people and some people it happens earlier so what happens is um, as i was preparing for marriage i knew for sure i had to prepare for it early so i had to emotionally psychologically and even financially as you're going to see in other videos that are going uh, on, on my channel and i'm going to pin them for us to be able to watch so spiritually yes um i am a christian a believer and uh, that is my foundation and my value so to me when i was preparing for marriage spiritually it was very important for me to tell myself to tell karokyoi that we have a value system here that we are not going to compromise and my value system is as i was looking and waiting and looking forward to get married it had to be a christian at least that one i didn't have to think twice because that's a value that i hold very strongly i i cannot be able to go against that value because it's my being it's what makes me as karaoke and that is what i'm throwing to us and i'm asking do you think it's an important one spiritually you need to ask yourself what do you believe what is your faith what keeps you going what do you believe in because it helps you to be able to prepare so as i was preparing i knew spiritually i wanted uh to get married to a christian not even to get married even to date i could not have dated because what happens is i've realized sometimes people make mistakes in this way yeah so you're like oh i'll just be dating this person who is not having the same values as me but i know i will change them <laughs> And you know the challenge is i don't know how successful that is but most probably if someone has not already believed in your belief system in the faith that you believe in when they get and they fall in love it's easy for them to be warped up to be confused <laughs> And to be able to feel like, oh, I think, fine, uh, you're a Christian, I'll also be a Christian. Oh, you go to church on Sunday. Oh, yes, I will go to church on Sunday. Um, you believe in the um, power of the Trinity. Yes, God, Father, uh, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. It's, able for, it's possible for someone to recite what you have told them already your faith is. And this one, I want to believe even to someone who is a Muslim, someone who is a Hindu, someone who is not even maybe believing in anything it's possible for you to struggle if you're having someone of the opposite so personally because i'm a christian personally i had to uh I tell myself way in advance even as i was praying uh that i wanted someone who is a believer and something that is, is of importance is also to pray when you are not dating already to set your values because for example if you don't have a value it is said if you don't know where you want to go, any route, any any bus that comes will take you to any destination. So it's important for you to know which route are you taking, what do you want. So it was very clear in my mind that uh, for sure I want to get married, for sure it has to be a Christian. That one was like a fundamental, like a must. And this one is also... Um, going to be supported by uh the word of god because as i said the bible 
is my is my pillar is my strength in my tower of strength is where i'm founded and when you look at the uh book of uh, second corinthians chapter 6 verse 14 this is when paul was talking about his hardships and he was talking to the church of corinth and he was talking about it and he was basically talking about the worship and the idolatry and the challenges that were in the church of corinth at that time so in the book of second corinthians chapter 6 verse 14 you can read the whole of it but verse 14 is where it is profound because it is said he was now talking to them after giving them the fair deal of how they should look at um, the worship of one true God. So in verse 14 of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, it says, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? And this verse, eh, it could be common, it could be... Uh, maybe one of the ones that are mentioned around maybe the worship, including marriage. But how I look at it is to personalize it. And hey, <laughs> having uh, seen how the cows or the bulls eh, do plowing using the plow, and when two bulls are yoked together or pulling a cart, even when those two bulls are put together, when they are plowing, they have to be bulls. They try to match the height, the strength, because the yoke that is put on their neck to equalize them, to make them balance when they are pulling the cart or pulling the plow, it has to be balanced by the strength, by the size. You can imagine a very big bull of maybe say, uh, I don't know, 800 kilos and another small bull of 500 kilos and one that is very uh, big and hefty and another one small one. That cart, when they'll be pulling luggage because it's used like in the farms and such, you'll find the cart will be wobbly and will not move together. And if it is like, uh, if it's during the plow where the, the, the farmer is pulling on the plow, pushing it under, and the bulls are pulling the plow to plow. I don't know, we are thinking of tractors and mechanized farming, but in those uh, villages where they use that, they can see the picture that I'm trying to paint here, that the two bulls that are of equal strength and equal height and everything, when they are pulling the plow, it's going to move uniformly and equally, and the plowing will be easier. Likewise, is how I look at relationships. So in these relationships, when you yoke yourself, when you put yourself in an environment with someone that you can never agree on anything, even when you say we pray, they don't know how to pray like you. When you say we go to church, they'll be telling you, ah, you go to church. When you come in the evening, we will talk. Maybe even when you're dating, when you tell them on Sunday, we can't meet, maybe unless we meet in the afternoon, after visiting, uh, maybe after going to church, they are like, okay, I'll be in the house. Maybe, okay, I'll be killing hangover. Or maybe I'll just be relaxing, waiting for you to come from church. Even the spiritual and feeling that you went to be refreshing in church, when you meet, this other person will, is not on the same. So it's like that cut of yours called love affair. It's going to be struggling. It's not going to be moving uniformly in the same way. What about even when you decide, okay, you want to continue dating? The value system is going to be different because there is a belief that you have as a Christian. And this person who is not a Christian, their belief is different. Even where they go, you might not want to go as a believer, as a Christian, and they'll be pushing you towards that, which becomes very difficult for you to move uniformly. For example, also... Let's imagine now if you were to decide, oh, I'm the one to change this man. Uh, anyway, I'm going to get married. And then when you get married, I'm going to change my husband. One thing that I think it's more challenging and an uphill task is for you to think you can believe some, you can change someone because you've gone into marriage. <laughs> Let me tell you, marriage has its own ball game, as they say. Yeah. Because they say um, love is blind, dating is blind, but marriage is an eye opener. Because it's a different ball game. It's commitment. It's persistent. It's the love that you first believe in. So if in the first place, even when you're dating this person, you didn't fall in love because you love them. <laughs> but it's because you thought you wanted to change them in marriage. What will you be holding on to? Because when you get into marriage, you'll be telling them you want to go to church. They'll even tell you, hey, remember madam, remember sir. I never used to because it's either way even for a man when you unequally yoke yourself with an unbelieving girl when you get married to her thinking you'll change her 
she'll also be the same you're telling her oh let's take our children to sunday school they're like no let's watch cartoons on sunday likewise even to a woman when you say that so to me the unequally yoking was mandatory to me and i knew i couldn't and not just because someone is going to church i had to look at it and this is prayerfully because you cannot understand the heart of a man or the heart of a woman it's only god who can be able to help you understand and you see that is why paul now was telling them you know enlightening even the light and the darkness because those two cannot coexist when he says what do righteousness and wickedness have in common by there there is no commonness because one will be moving to righteousness wanting to please god to say sorry when they wrong you because they know it is wrong to try endeavor not to cheat you because they know the ten commandments do not to try and remain faithful to you because it's only by the help of god that we do these things it's not because you can't but it's because of the fear of god while the wicked ones it is okay you can justify oh I want to see another man because after all <laughs> my husband uh, is not a six pack is not uh, as handsome and uh, does not have a lot of money oh my wife i want to see another woman because hey <laughs> i have seen this girl with a figure eight uh, because she's good because she speaks better english or because she's learned than my wife you see the wickedness it's easy to justify but the righteousness it is resisting and saying no i'm going to push this body because push it down push the feelings push the thoughts because of the fear of god so that is where the danger comes too when you unequally yoke yourself and also that when paul was also talking to them he said what fellowship can light have in darkness there is one thing that i'm going to tell you light and darkness cannot coexist just try this it's in the evening it's at night you get into your house you go into your house just as you're going in you turn on the lights what happens the darkness has to disappear and when you're going to bed and you turn off your lights what happened the lights disappear and the darkness has to appear so the two honestly they cannot coexist what am i saying in a date you're dating someone who you are unequally yoked who is uh, not uh, righteous who is not um a light like you so when you meet you'll not be having the same values every time you discuss something it will be like oh my ancestor said maybe or they will say oh we need to sacrifice this blood to uh, the gods or they will say i want us to worship flowers or something whatever you are by the way allow me to even say other faiths because even like a muslim they have their own way of believing if they say they need to pray five times that is very important to them and even hindus if they want to go to their temple that is why to a christian then believe in what you believe in and that is why if you you you'd rather be hot or cold and even in the book of revelation it is say that god hate lukewarmness he will spit out from his mouth people who are lukewarm it's either you are cold or hot if you're a christian believer be a believer be a christian if you're not they're not other than sitting in between and trying to play so as you're praying and looking forward for uh, a husband prepare spiritually in advance so that when this man comes into your life you're able to tell so that when this woman comes into your life with the help of god you're able to tell it is not easy and it doesn't mean that because you do that you have conquered sometimes even in those marriages you'll be looking at your spouse like this and you see there is a certain area that they have not measured and you know what even you you are not 100% that is the beauty of marriage when you get into it you don't get into it because you're perfect you are also missing some areas that your husband is has to measure you up has to top you up and likewise as a man you are not 100% you're not an angel husband your wife will also be seeing some areas that you are wrong that is why the two will learn how to dance you know like you step on each other sometimes you step on the toes of the, each other and then you have to correct yourself and say okay this is what you've done you've you didn't do this right you didn't keep time we were late for church or whatever you were uh, supposed to and then the wife maybe can the husband can help the wife by waking up early or maybe ironing the clothes maybe the husband has weakness also of maybe uh not getting on time or arranging his clothes the wife can help what i'm saying is why dating and courtship is supposed to be seen from the eyes of god it's because it can never be perfect because you're already not perfect the two people help each other to walk in this journey because they are equally yoked 
they are able to work together even when sometimes they see things from a different perspective perspective they'll be shouting maybe they're annoyed maybe they're not talking when they remember who their fear is and who they're answerable to it softens them can you imagine now if both of you you don't have equal measures so uh, say for example you've deferred today and in the evening you're still you haven't corrected that differences the man will say okay let me take a few uh, bottles of uh, alcohol or glasses of wine and you're like let me read my bible what does the my people say where are you going to find some commonness <laughs> you see the challenge so that is why i'm thinking part of preparation is also your value system what do you believe in what do you agree so that now when you get into this relationship now start praying in that dating ask god god this is what I had asked for you. Open my eyes. Help me to see. And even when you continue, when you also get into marriage, this God, you never leave. Continue with it. So personally, that is my value system. That is my belief system. That is how I prepared. Share with us. Hey, how did you prepare with it for yours? Did you prepare spiritually for your marriage? If you are not married, are you planning to get married? If you are, how are you preparing spiritually? What's your faith? Tell us. Make a comment, like, share our, our video, subscribe, turn on your notification so that we can be able to continue growing as Cairo family, Cairo Kyoi family. We want to thank you as we continue to inspire ourselves and believe life is a journey. Walk in it. Till we get to see you again, stick around and see you then. God bless. Thank you.